because I would wake up in the middle of the night in these like little children's dormitories and I'd run around this small town of 300 people trying to get home and I would just feel terrified and feel abandoned. And I would say, here's the other thing that people need to understand. The younger you are, the less severe the trauma needs to be to be major trauma for you. Because you could be in therapy 10, 20 years and have a better mindset, but still feel like a mess inside. And that's yeah. because the trauma needs to be processed and released. And you might feel that the situation is making you angry. Um, and it could be, but but the reason for the overreaction is, is deep subconscious programming that you have from typically from early childhood. What's up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. Today, we are with Mr. Shalev Amar. How are you today, my friend? Doing great. How are you, David? Man, I don't know. I, I, it's good, my friend. It's really, really good. So, um, well, you and I met a few weeks ago at the uh, Genius Network, and you you did a talk, and you talked about trauma. And wow, I mean, I, I just think that was that's that's the the talk that I believe anybody, if you're a human being, you're you're gonna be able to relate to that, right? Is 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 that accurate, you think, or I do. You know, most people have experienced some type of trauma in their life. Um, you know, some people have kind of Brady Bunch upbringings where it's super loving and positive in the home. Um, people with that kind of background tend to be less prone to trauma, but, mm. but yeah, like you said, if you're a human being, there's going to be things that, that intentionally or otherwise can traumatize you. Which I think most of our less listeners do fall in that, that, uh, category of human beings. So, uh, so I think we're in good shape and uh, how many people, like how many, what would you say is a percentage of families that do kind of grow up in the Brady bunch like it's got to be a small percentage, right? I mean, yeah, I would think it, it's trampant, not trampant, rampant uh, is kind of abuse, neglect mm. um, in various forms. And so I don't have any scientific study. If I had to guess, I would say no more than 20% of households or, or that type of idyllic household yeah yeah i know i i went through a lot as a kid and that's why i was could relate so much to your talk um it's interesting most of the people i know went through something as a child something my wife mm -hmm. she uh, she went through stuff i mean she came over from uh from laos so she was in a refugee camp for a couple of years i mean it, you know everybody it seems like everybody's got got something going on but you know what what i'm trying to do is is do the best i can to protect my my daughters from having to go through any of that, you know, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. But well, yeah, look, uh, awareness is huge, because I think a big part of the problem is lack of awareness. And what you have are just cycles of trauma that are passed on from generation to generation, mm -hmm. unconsciously, not intentionally. If you ask most parents, hey, are you intending to traumatize your children? Of course, most parents would say no. Um, but there are behaviors and actions that they take that can be traumatizing. Um, and oftentimes it's just, you know, from early childhood, we're socially programmed. If there's a lot of screaming and chaos in the household, you tend to repeat that in adulthood because that's just all you know. Um, mm. So if a, if a certain situation comes up, you might fly off the handle rather than discuss it rationally. Um, and you might feel that the situation is making you angry. Um, and it could be, but, but the reason for the overreaction is, is deep subconscious programming that you have from typically from early childhood. Mm, yeah. Interesting. It's, I'm going to get to your bio in a minute. I want to, I want to tell people who you are. Um, what this makes me think about though is you know my wife her family um they talk really loud and they yell and that's just how they communicate like when her mom calls it's like you think they're arguing 
And me now, I come from a very abusive, uh, you know, father was an alcoholic and he beat us. So when he yelled, it, it was, it was not, it was a bad thing. So it's just interesting with the two dynamics. So when I, when I hear my wife yelling, it, it doesn't, you know, it, 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 um, it affects me. And I sometimes say, you don't have to yell, stop yelling. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just, it's interesting where, when, when those two connect, you know, based on where I, where my background and, and her background. Yeah, definitely. Look, there, there could be cultural issues. Um, you know, different ethnic families can be more expressive and gregarious. I mean, I'm, I'm half Greek and Israeli and, um, you know, Israelis tend to be kind of more aggressive, more brash, more loud. Um, so yeah, part of it is cultural, but I think a lot of it is the intent behind the yelling. Mm. There's a difference with just being loud and expressive, and that's just kind of your personality and how you communicate versus uh, being loud with an intent to injure or threaten. And that's what I think can, can be traumatic. So it's not being loud in and of itself. It's what is the intent behind it? That's a great point. But without, without the awareness, then you don't, I, I don't even notice the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Or somebody won't notice the, the difference because that's, I think that's the key, the awareness, at least for me, it's like, I know like how that affects me. And I, I don't like, listening to it a lot of times in a way, you know, anyway, I'm not going to get into all that, but. Well, no, look, it, that's fine to get into. Cause you know what? I, I, my, one of my biggest triggers is being yelled at mm. um, because growing up, I, I was yelled at very often by my father. He had, he wasn't an alcoholic, but my grandfather was. And this is what I'm talking about as far as multi-generational trauma that gets passed on. Uh, my grandfather, he was in Auschwitz in the Holocaust, and he was severe, severely traumatized by that experience and, and was a, a very problematic drinker and alcoholic. And he would fly into rages because, you know, this having an alcoholic father, um, people in that state get angered very easily um and you know overreact about minor things and so that's what my father grew up around he grew up around that chaos um of not knowing what his dad would act like when he got home and if his dad was belligerent drunk watch out you know it, it was going to be bad for mm. everyone and so that got programmed into my father and even though he didn't drink, he was basically a dry drunk, a, a rageaholic, and he would just fly into rages just like an alcoholic could. So that's why I, I, I can empathize a lot with people who had alcoholic parents because that's similar behavior to what my dad had, having borderline personality disorder. And BPD just basically means inability to control your emotions and that's why people who have bpd can just lose their minds and fly off the handle at very little provocation sometimes no provocation they'll just remember something that happened and decide to start screaming at you even though you're not doing anything at the moment mm. that can really be very traumatizing and it can also cause generalized anxiety disorder uh, because a lot of so-called disorders, really, I wouldn't say are, are, are necessarily disorders like chemical imbalances or, or stuff like that. That can happen. Um, but typically what, what disorders are, are ways that your mind devises to help you survive under certain environments. So generalized anxiety basically walking on eggshells, being kind of trapped in fight or flight, the reason your body developed that in your mind is because you were in an environment where, like I said, anything could set off your, your caretaker. And so that's why you're always on guard. The problem mm -hmm. is in adulthood, when you're no longer in that environment, it becomes maladaptive. And, and you know, I'm like you, if somebody raises their voice to me, it's, it's very triggering. And it's taken a lot of work, you know, 
to have that awareness to see that sometimes if somebody's being loud, you got to look at the context. They're not necessarily being aggressive and they're not going to try and attack you. Um, but it, it, it's challenging. It takes time and it takes, frankly, not just mindset. You have to actually do trauma release work, mm. um, which I've been doing for years. And I think that's a huge element that's missing from a lot of modern therapy, you know, uh, therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, is there's a lot of focus on the problem. There's a lot of focus on medication, which basically treats symptoms. But in my view, there's not enough focus on not just getting to the root cause, but pulling out the trauma by the roots. And that takes certain types of methods and work. And unfortunately, th that's not near as common as it needs to be. It's actually Really very uncommon because you mm. could be in therapy 10 20 years and have a better mindset but still feel like a mess inside and that's yeah. because the trauma needs to be processed and released yeah that makes a lot of sense it's kind of like the person that says they want to lose weight they go to the gym but they're still eating terrible food all the time cookies and ice cream and all that other stuff you're not you're not you're not getting to the to the solve the, the root issue, right? Correct, um, because, you, you know, people will overeat for the same reason that people drink, for the same people, the same reason that people, that is, uh, gamble, the same reason that people engage in promiscuous sex. Um, there is a variety of behaviors that people use to basically numb their symptoms and to mm. escape the pain. The problem is that that never it temporarily gives you an escape, but it doesn't get to the root. Yeah. Well, let me let me tell people who you are. <laughs> We're like 15 minutes in. Um, uh, Shalev Amar is a is isn't a psychiatrist. He isn't a psychologist. He isn't even a therapist. Shalev isn't a doctor. He's a lawyer, a very successful lawyer who, for the past 17 years has been advocating for consumers of defective lemon vehicles and getting manufacturers of uh, defective motorhomes, cars, and motorcycles to abide by the lemon law. Shalev has been involved in thousands of such cases with his team of 11, have proven exceptional in this area of law and successfully resolved lemon law claims for their clients. While Shalev was winning in the legal world, he felt he was losing in his own emotional world by being trapped in nearly unbearable trauma caused by cycles of flight, fight, or freeze. Uh, Shalab's ultimate goal in the, next, in the next step of his life after he leaves the practice of law is to devote himself completely to helping people release, uh, process, and heal their own trauma. During his nine-year healing journey, Shalab has read hundreds of books, watched thousands of hours of videos and attended numerous seminars and actually studied more about trauma than he ever did about the legal world his career has been based on. As a result of this extensive study, Shalev has uncovered some unique and highly effective trauma release processing and healing methods, which he's going to share with you today. Um, so, hey, man, again, welcome. I, that's <laughs> usually I do that in the beginning, but, uh, you know, I was just intrigued by the conversation. So we jumped right into it. So what so from all that healing, I mean, all that all that research and, and, and education and and study, what what would you say is the is there something common that kind of noticed from that? Is there like a common theme or thing or is it is, you know, like what would you say is the one thing you learned about people with trauma? Uh, look, the, the biggest thing I've learned is that you have, like, human beings are very individualized. What works amazing for me might not work amazing for you. But with that being said, we're also very genetically similar. And so um, even if something that I've done to process and release trauma won't work as well for you, it will work somewhat. And so the key is to have kind of an open-minded um, an open-minded mindset to just try things and see what works best for you. And when you find what works best for you, double down on that and go all in and be consistent and do it over time 
until you feel healed. And, and as far as I'm concerned, it's a lifelong journey. There are some things that are major difficult trauma release processes that you probably aren't going to want to do the rest of your life, but there are other ones that, that can even become a part of your daily routine. And the key is consistency. Mm. If you lift weights, if you do one curl, or if you work out one day every month or two, what's that going to do for you? Almost nothing. So the key is uh, to, again, find what works and then stick with it and be consistent. And so there's many, many trauma healing and processing methods. Well, let me uh, ask you this before we get into the methods. How does somebody know if they are dealing with trauma? Because I, I, I'm guessing a lot of people may not even be aware, right, that they're dealing yeah, with that's, it? That's true. Um, well, here's some common uh, trauma symptoms. One is like what I was telling you about basically being trapped in fight, flight, or freeze. It's like being in your own personal hell. Um, the way to describe it is the feeling that you get if you're in a tall building and you feel like you're going to fall over the edge or you, you just, um, a car almost smacks into you. You almost have an accident. That reaction that you get, it's basically you feel like that way too often. Some mm -hmm. people, if their trauma is bad enough, feel like that all day long. And it's, it's awful. It, it's like a personal hell. I don't wish it on my worst enemy. Uh, so, so that's at the most extreme level. But there can be other trauma symptoms too. Um, insomnia, emotional reactivity, um, obsessive rumination, um, catastrophic worst case scenario thinking, these are all symptoms of, of somebody who's been traumatized. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. You're right. I, so you're so, so you're saying somebody that like somebody that thinks like negative all the time, like the worst, always thinking the worst, um, that could be a result of, of trauma that they're not even aware of. Correct. Cause again, what it is, is it's a combination of things. First it, it's, programming social programming that's put into you by whoever traumatized you or abused you often that voice we hear in our head we think even if it's our own voice we think it's us but it's not us it's that critical parent that mm -hmm. said things to you hundreds if not thousands of times then you start saying that to yourself in your own voice and 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 it's also the other component of that is the negative thinking is is really to try and protect you a lot of the time so you so you're aware of of the worst case scenario but again the problem is it's maladaptive because it's running on repeat constantly and it can make you crazy and it obviously affects your mood in a negative way and it makes you unhappy so let's talk about some of the trauma release work that you shared with us um out in arizona so what um do you want to give us some of those techniques that you had talked about and i know there sure, were some that, that were maybe i guess on the easier scale and other ones that were on the much more difficult scale right that's correct so why don't we start in the easier scale um because you got to start somewhere and and i think what helps a lot is to kind of lower your barrier of entry and if it's something that's not going to be super hard, you're more likely to do it. And as that, that heals you, you can build up the courage to do more difficult things. So the first thing I would recommend to people who are trying to overcome trauma is a healing method called network chiropractic. The name is a bit deceptive because it's, it's not really chiropractic adjustments it's more pressure point therapy uh, or or bioenergetic balancing and what that does is that helps um, it helps to calm your nervous system and it also helps to balance your energy not to get too woo woo I'm an attorney but the more time I've spent on this stuff I've seen that woo has some value um, but in any event that pressure point therapy is very, very calming and relaxing. Uh, the way 
I could describe it to your audience is just imagine that you're having a massage for an hour and you've also meditated for an hour. That's how you feel like afterwards. So both your mind and your body are very relaxed afterwards. And it helps a lot with that, you know, being trapped in fight, flight, or freeze. It helps calm your system down. And so network chiropractic, I've been doing that for years. I was such a mess that I started at three or four times a week. Mm. Um, then I did two times a week for several years. And, and at this point I do once a week just as maintenance. Um, but I would actually recommend network Cairo, even to someone who's not traumatized, just because life is stressful. It's basically Sounds like, like it. defragging the hard drive and just rebalances. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. That's, that sounds amazing. Yeah, so that's the first one. Um, something else I would recommend that's a bit more challenging is trauma release exercises or TRE. Now, if, if it's somebody who's dealing with a high level of trauma, it probably makes sense to do this with a practitioner or at least somebody that you can trust there to support you um, because what these exercises do are is they basically they fatigue your psoas muscles which causes your body to shake and that shaking it's kind of like if you see somebody in the side of the road after a serious accident they can be sitting there covered in a blanket kind of shaking that's actually a good thing that's the body's natural way of releasing trauma from your nervous system and from your body and so what these exercises do, TRE, is they induce that tremoring. And the tremoring helps to release the trauma. And so um, those are very helpful as well. And getting even more challenging, there's a method called Wim Hof, Wim Hof breathing method. Mm. And what that is, is it's a breathing method that's combined with cold exposure. You basically breathe out to the bottom of your breath and hold as long as you can. And at the same time, expose yourself to cold. And it doesn't have to be for a long time. You just need about two minutes of cold to get uh, the, the positive benefits of that. And what that does is short term, it raises your adrenaline, your epinephrine and norepinephrine levels. But because they're raised for that short period of time, those levels are lower the rest of the day. So your adrenaline and cortisol levels are more balanced and lower. So you feel less stressed and less anxious and you're less likely to be triggered by life. Uh, so that's helpful as well. Um, something that, and I gotta preface this because I'm a lawyer, um, psychedelics can be helpful. They're not for everyone. Um, especially people who are bipolar or schizophrenic, uh, psychedelics are not a good idea. Psychedelics are also illegal in many places, although they're, they are starting to be decriminalized in certain places, like I believe Denver and Oregon. Um, I think in Mexico, they're also decriminalized. Uh, but in any event, uh, I'm not recommending that anybody break the law, but if you are interested in the healing effects of psychedelics, see if you can, there's also starting to be therapeutic use of psychedelics that's allowed mm. and uh, research studies that you can become a part of. So, so those are methods to be able to do psychedelics and not get in trouble. Um, but they, they can be helpful. They, they can be very challenging as well because sometimes they, they force you to face painful memories uh, but they can also increase your awareness and help you process and release trauma. And the most difficult thing that, that I've done in nine years, um, and it is legal, but it's very, very physically challenging. And again, not for everyone. It's not for someone who's not physically healthy enough. And it's also not for people who are bipolar or schizophrenic. But there's an Amazonian frog poison called combo. And that causes purging of trauma, um, extreme purging that, that can take, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of, of heavy vomiting. And you, you drink about a liter and a half of water before. Extremely difficult to go through when the combo is first put on you. Uh, you feel hot and flushed. Your heart starts racing. 
then you feel really nauseous and then you just start purging like crazy, which is not fun. It's very difficult to go through and then you're worn out for a couple of days. But then on like day three or four, you wake up and I kid you not, whatever your trauma level is, one through 10, let's say it's eight, you wake up, it's at a four. It's incredible and amazing. But unlike a magic pill, um, which, you know, a lot of people want that magic pill. I wouldn't say it's a magic pill, but it's the closest thing that I found to it. But unlike a magic pill, yeah, you actually have to pay a heavy physical price to get mm -hmm. that trauma release. But that's really only, I would say, for people who have done trauma work for a while and just feel courageous enough and think that that can give them a lot of healing. Um, again, if somebody is even considering combo, you got to confer with your doctor. You got to make sure that you're healthy enough. Wow. So it sounds like every, just about every one of them is really, it's a, it's a psychological, right? It's not, it's, I mean, it's not really like everything you talked about is really, I mean, even the, the combo, it's just like, I mean, I guess it does have physical effect on your body, but ultimately, I don't know. I, I just, it's, it's interesting. That's all to be purging like that. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's interesting. Yeah, it's very hard. And look, um, on top of not being a doctor, I'm not a scientist either, but mm -hmm. I have, you know, read articles and done some research on my own. They theorize that, that psychedelics and combo may actually rewire your brain. Um, with combo in particular, that it, it may rewire your brain to increase serotonin production. But again, that that's not really proven. There's, sure. as far as I know, there haven't been double blind placebo studies um, but, but they're, they're hypothesizing that that could be one of the benefits of it. All right. And what would you say is the biggest misconception when it comes to emotional trauma? I think the biggest misconception is that you can only be traumatized by something extreme, like, like witnessing a murder, uh, or seeing your, your buddy blown up if you're off in a war. Um, or having, or being cheated on by a spouse, um, or being robbed at gunpoint or being severely physically beaten or being raped or molested. Um, that definitely traumatizes you. <laughs> it definitely mm -hmm. can cause PTSD. Uh, but the biggest misconception is, is there can be small T trauma, which if it happens often enough, can be just as traumatizing. Uh, so what are small t traumas? Uh, being yelled at by a caregiver over and over again. Being belittled by a caregiver over and over again. Being bullied for months or even years. Uh, being severely neglected and disregarded in your childhood. Extreme poverty, that can be traumatizing. And so what people need to understand is it's kind of like a stair step. Over time, that trauma, if it's not processed, it just adds up over time. And even though the extreme trauma is up here to start, that trauma, if it happens enough, can even go to a higher level than the extreme trauma. Like in my case, for example, because there are several things that traumatized me, but, but my father, he was not very physically abusive. I mean, sometimes he would grab me by my ear, which parents do, or, or grab me by my arm and I'd have like finger marks, but he never beat me. But you know what? The sticks and stones thing is just not true. It's the emotional, mm. it, it's the emotional abuse that was very difficult. And, and it's because it was repeated. Um, you know, a common example is little kids are stumbly. I would, I would spill something and you just start screaming like a lunatic at me and saying horrible things to me. Like you're worthless. You don't care about anything. Stuff like that. That's very damaging to a young child. Um, and that happened. I don't even know how many times I lost count, probably thousands. Um, and, and other things as well, you know, I, I had 
abandonment issues because when I was a young child, I, I grew up in Israel in what's called a kibbutz. They don't do this anymore because they they figured out it's not good for kids. Um, but unfortunately, it happened to me. I was taken away from my parents at a year old. So I had major abandonment issues because I would wake up in the middle of the night in these like little children's dormitories and I'd run around this small town of 300 people trying to get home and I would just feel terrified and feel abandoned. And I would say, here's the other thing that people need to understand. The younger you are, the less severe the trauma needs to be to be major trauma for you. Mm. Something as an adult that you might be able to just shrug, shrug off for a child, especially when it's their parents, could be a major, major traumatizing event. So let's say you had a friend who gets mad at you and says, you know, I don't have any friends like this, but sometimes friends that might be drunk or something might say like, oh, you're a bastard, blah, blah, blah. That might not do much to you. Be like, whatever, he's drunk. You might be mad at him, but you're not traumatized by it. But if you have a parent when you're four years old saying, you little bastard, you're worthless, that could be extremely traumatizing to a young child. So that's a factor as well as the, the age of when things happen. The younger you are, the more likely um, an event can be traumatic for you. And also, because your brain's not fully developed, you don't understand um, that if something happens, it's generally about that person. It's not about you. It's their issue. But as a young child, you don't have that awareness. You think, well, this wouldn't be happening to me unless I, unless I was bad, unless I deserved it somehow, because I'm unlovable, because I'm mm. not worthy. And that's stories that we tell ourselves as young children, and that becomes deeply ingrained in, in your subconscious, and it can affect the rest of your life. Hmm. Wow. So much, man. So much there. I mean, we could definitely continue this conversation for hours. It, you know, I have a, my four-year-old, we were watching a movie um, a couple of weeks ago and it was a superheroes movie. It was like Avengers or something. And, and she saw, you know, we didn't realize she was even, see, she saw her part and she started crying. And so even something like that, you know, and then she was talking, you know, she peed her bed that night. And so it's all, it's all those little things. I think we have to pay advantage. Uh, you know, we have to pay attention to as well as, uh, as parents. So, um, I think it's, it's so, yeah, so much, this could go so deep, man. Definitely. Um, and, and, you know, um, people like Gabor Mate is doing amazing work on trauma. And I also recommend to your viewers to follow the dot holistic dot psychologist, uh, on Instagram. She's amazing. She's got, she gets it. She's got 4 million view, um, followers. Um, but part of what Gabor Mate says is. Could you is, spell that? What uh, is it again? How do you spell it? The yeah. dot holistic dot psychologist. Okay, cool. All right. I'll check. Um, and, you know, one of the things that, that Gabor Mate says is trauma is not just the event that happens. It's feeling alone and unsupported. So even if something is traumatizing for your child, if you're there for your child, if you talk to your child and you're just present with your child physically and show your child that you're there for her, for mm. him, that actually helps prevent traumatization. That's a great point. Awesome, my friend. Well, I just want to say I appreciate you. Appreciate you doing this. Uh, such an important message for people. And yeah, I, I mean, we could probably go on for hours. Uh, we're not going to do that though. So how, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to learn more about what you're up to and what are you up to in this, in this area besides well, doing right this now, today? Right now I, I am a full-time attorney with uh, his own law firm, which takes up a lot of my time, but this, this is my passion and my mission to help people, um, find their way through trauma because I spent years banging my head against the wall and I want to speed up time for others. I know a lot of people are suffering. Um, where you can get the most information free of charge because uh, at this point I don't have any products and, and I'm not doing any one-on-ones with people. I, I will be doing that in the future. 
Um, but if people want some free information, I'm just looking to, to build my following right now. Uh, go to YouTube at Freedom From Trauma and all kinds of videos going deep into these topics, all kinds of methods, including daily methods. Uh, so, so yeah, if, you're, if your viewers are interested, please check that out. And um, if anybody has a lemon vehicle, <laughs> they, can, they can visit my website, ArizonaLemonLawAdvocates.com. And if someone comments uh, to one of my videos, um, you know, I, I, I read all the comments. I reply to all of them. So if they have a question or need some additional guidance, I'll, I'll, I'll help them out. Awesome. Well, for you listening, you know, I'm not sure why I never said this before. I've been doing this podcast for four years, but if you want to watch the video, you know, you can actually watch the video by going to YouTube and uh, just go to David Hill coach and, uh, or path to mastery, but David Hill coach will bring you right to my YouTube channel and the video is there. And if you want to check out Shalav and uh, watch the video, it's going to be there as well. So, and then definitely check out Shalav's channel as well as uh, the holistic psycho psychologist. Is that what it is? No, no. So. Yeah. Yeah. Dot yeah. dot holistic dot psychologist Got on it. Instagram. Okay. Awesome. She does amazing work. Okay. Perfect. Um, and what's the, um, in wrapping up, like I always ask the final, the final thought or the final question, what, what do you want people to take from this today? What do you want people to walk away with? If there was, if there was just one thing that they took from this whole interview. I want people to understand, especially people who have been traumatized that you don't have to suffer through your life. There are ways out. Um, I'm not going to say it's easy, and I'm not going to say that you can wave a magic wand, but if you commit yourself to healing and make that your number one priority, everything in your life will get better. Everything. Because if you have all the money in the world, what does it matter if you're twisted in knots all the time inside and emotionally reactive and unhappy and can't sleep well? The time is going to pass anyways. You may as well start taking steps to heal, process, and release the trauma that's, that's holding you down emotionally and preventing you from being your best self and just from, from being happy and enjoying life. You don't have to suffer. All right. Amen, brother. Important message. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, David. It was great.